I know I'm going to do an explanation at the very start, but this very much reminds me of what I'm doing, like Fight Club. You go in and said, today your challenge is to spawn no fill and try to use movement to get away or get into an encounter like you're going to see in this video. It's the rule of Fight Club where I think the line is, I believe the line is you're going to go out, you're going to fight with a total stranger. And honestly, maybe we start a movement. Go fight with movement with a total stranger and lose because you're going to master your movement. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be really interesting. It's something you guys have all asked and I've never really seen a video done on it on YouTube talking about when do you use movement on Apex Legends. So what we're going to cover is I'm going to land hot first. I'm not going to grab any weapons this whole time and I'm going to showcase you over and over when to use movement in encounters. So I'm going to drop hot here in a second. And I'm going to land and I'm going to showcase what happens whenever you don't have any movement and showcase how fast you get eliminated. Then we're going to go back into the lobby and I'm going to showcase what happens when you have a strafe. And then I'm going to highlight when you use movement in a fight and when you use movement to retreat. So that's going to be the premise of the video. So let's go ahead and drop hot real quick right now. And then we'll get into it. I'll jump cut. I'm going to stand here without much of a strafe and move forward. And you'll see I just get eliminated right away. So let's do this again. I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna showcase how much longer you'll save time by doing a strafe left and right. Okay, now you'll notice that this is my alt account, but I am running into master squad, so these players are pretty competent. They know what they're doing. Now remember, never walk into a straight line. I can't stress it enough, don't walk in a straight line. This is like, if you ever seen Game of Thrones? You don't ever walk in a straight line, you divvy it up, you move left and right and you strafe. I'm gonna showcase now, granted they had a flat line, how much longer you will survive by incorporating a strafe into your into your movement. So I'm gonna land here. And again, all of this, what we're highlighting is how movement can extend and prolong your survivability, especially at these high caliber levels. Remember that if you're doing this at a lower tier level, that you're going to survive even longer. So let's take a look. So let's say they grab a weapon. Just strafing left and right. Look, they, they stopped focusing me. They stopped focusing me. Flat out, they stopped looking at me because I was strafing, doing a strafe left and right. Notice how much longer I survived compared to just going in a straight line and getting eliminated. I Granted, I got shot by multiple people there. I wasn't even just shot strictly by the wingman. I got hit by a R99, a P2020, an EVA 8, and a wingman. I got shot and that was, that was by a, a predator. That was by Predator. This is actually going to be a fantastic video example. The Wraith flat out said, you know what? Let me finish somebody who didn't get a weapon, who is a higher priority and a higher threat. And notice the difference from strafing left and right and juking somebody, how movement can prolong your life. It's really, really important. Now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight when do you use a wall bounce in an encounter. So I'll highlight that and showcase how you can use movement. We're going to drop hot again and how you can move around corners. When, you ever, when do you wall bounce? When do you tap strafe? When do you use a tap strafe to get away? We're going to talk about all that different type of movement tech and break it down. This is, I'm going to try to make this as fast and efficient as possible video because I don't want to waste your time. I want you to look at this video and realize, oh, very eye-opening and how it can help. Remember that while there is one way to do it, sometimes by baiting your enemy and standing still for a moment and then moving again can really throw them off. It, this is a way to kind of bait your opponent into making a mistake and missing their shot which is the whole goal which is what you saw there just a second ago and it's against high caliber players which I'm, I'm so happy that the RNG played in our favor so I'm gonna jump cut again I'm gonna highlight again now when do you wall bounce I may pick up a gun but I'm not going to shoot it and I'm gonna showcase when can you wall bounce and what can you do to prolong your life that's what movement is I think people get confused thinking that movement is going to magically win you in the encounter it doesn't work that way well, i'm getting into some crazy lobbies well good example to showcase when you use movement whenever you don't right so we're going to land hot again i'm going to look for a team i'm going to land on top of them and i'm going to showcase when you can incorporate a wall bounce and a tap strafe to get away from an encounter so i'm going to land near a team i'm going to let them get the gun and what you can do to essentially get away and maybe the, this will be the extent of the video because i'll try to highlight as much here as humanly possible for you guys to really see what you can do. So we just did the strafe earlier, and now we're going to, let's see, who's got a gun here? Let's land on this team. So let's say they have a gun, right? And they look at me, wall bounce over the wall, tap strafe, I can wall bounce again, I can jump down, and what I'm gonna do right now, I'm a super zip line jump right here, into a tap strafe to juke them, wall bounce again, little wall bounce, Little tap strafe, tap strafe around the corner, move around again, 
and I'm going to zip up, not super zip lines jump. Then I'm going to wall bounce around the corner, but tap strafe really hard. Then I'm going to jump around the corner here. I'm going to tap strafe again a little bit down below. Then I'm going to super zip line. Oh, there we go. But look at that. That's actually crazy. That's crazy. You see how long you can prolong your life by moving around like an absolute maniac? And all I did, look, look, the team that was chasing me stopped being the team that chased me. And what you can do. It's little things. Now, whenever you have your gun out, and I'll do, I'll do this as the next example. Whenever you have your weapon out, you have to know when to put your gun away and when to take it out to, to take some shots and move around. But you see, again, it's all about prolonging your life. So if I was able to go find a gun, move around a corner, you see where the tap strafe, it makes a sharper angle so it's harder for you to reach. And also where you wall bounce to get over geometries. And it, I, honestly, I'm not planning of this. I'm just going where, wherever the flow goes in terms of movement just to make sure that I'm kind of on the whim uh, and like just kind of using whatever resources that I have. Right. But all I can do at that point, the other team ran. I unfortunately got run up by a different team because I landed on a seer team. Remember that I landed on a seer team. So essentially after that, what ended up happening, I got run up by another team, but the other team just flat out just gave up, which is the whole point when you're trying to use movement to either push forward, get into an encounter. So the question is when do you use a wall bounce to get into a fight? Well, you can use it to catch up. So let's talk about, Instead of using it defensively, let's talk about the offensive version of movement, right? Let's talk about that, and we're going to jump cut here once I land. We'll get a gun. I'm not going to shoot, and I'm going to talk about whenever you use weaponry and your movement to get into an engagement. That's the overall goal. Now, one major tip, especially when you're trying to rotate, is always to make sure to slide jump. That's the basis when you saw yesterday's movement where we're teaching wrist. I'll have a link down in the description down below. But make sure that you're using movement to always get towards where you need to go. Every second matters. Pretend that this is a speed run. Everything matters in terms of movement. So I assume that there's going to be a team located nearby. I'll at least pick up at least one gun, and I'm going to run towards the encounter. And we're gonna highlight that. So alternator's pretty decent, but you gotta remember when to put your gun away, when to take it out. You gotta get really used to this. So another question was, do I use a scroll wheel? The reason why I don't is I don't accidentally want to switch back to my weapon and overuse the scroll wheel, especially whenever I'm using it for movement. Remember that. So, oh, okay, well, they're, I wanna use this for offensive purposes, but you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna bunny hop heal. So when do people have that question, right? And you can wall bounce forward. Uh, that was not the best wall bounce, but still decent. And then you can reposition. So let's say I got into a gunfight here and they dropped on me. Let's let's pretend. So let's see where they're at. We'll try to find an angle. And I'm going to ADS towards them and then reposition and use movement to get into the fight. This isn't perfect. Remember, it's all about just exploring options. I'm giving you guys examples on how you can use movement. It doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. There's d many different ways that you can use movement to get into a fight and reposition. And that's where you see the creativity and the excitement happen. So let's say I were to get into this encounter and I see them down below, right? Let's get their attention. Look at me. Look at me. So let's say I want to wall bounce in. Let's say I was at a different angle here, right? And I was going to wide swing the angle. So what I could do, now this is not a perfect wall bounce right there. But what, what I could do is I could wall bounce here. Oh, not the best wall bounce. Let's reposition. We'll go here and see if they chase me. And I can use the wall bounce as like an aggressive maneuver to like go like that if I were to wide swing him. But if they chase me, if they chase me though, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're going to retreat and back up, but you want to use the mobility of wall bounces. Think of it again, speed run, speed run, speed run, speed run. How are you going to use movement to get you into a better position to fly you up? That is going to be your overall goal. So I'm going to try to dance as many circles around this team. Let me take out this so they don't know where exactly I'm at. So they're inside right here, right? Look, look at that guy. Doesn't know where I'm at, but if I wall bounce over him, and I use it to reposition, then I pull out my gun, and I, I got stuck between all three, but essentially you saw how my movement was already throwing him off. I could have literally just lasered the guy in the back for free, or shot at him, and he, had, he was none the wiser. So that is really, you see where I use the wall bounce if they chase me and how to use it offensively? Just think outside the box when it comes to movement. This isn't going to be perfect, and these are just kind of in-world, in-game examples against opponents and it, 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 it really surprised you because the skill based matchmaker you saw there was predators in the lobby you'd be surprised how getting the upper hand movement throwing enemy teams off can really get you the jump on an opponent especially when you're trying to cut around a corner faster when you're trying to bunny hop heal and reposition everything is reposition getting to a spot faster and trying to get the jump on your opponent that is the overall goal i can't stress that enough that it's going to be your biggest asset and your biggest strength so we're going to do this one more time i'm going to land cascades and we're going to highlight some movement and how to use it more offensively and like whenever you ADS. Let us say you are in an example 
where you are strafing and then you have to reload. An example of what you can do after your reload is to slide jump into a wall and then wall bounce. Remember the biggest thing, and I'll try to see if I can get a perfect example of this in a second. I'm gonna jump cut here to the next point once we are landing cascade. So we'll do that in just a second. For landing, I'm gonna give you another tip. So most people say, well, I learned the movement tech, but I don't know how to incorporate it in game. You have to practice the movement tech where it becomes so natural and you know what you can wall bounce off of, movement tech, when you just tap strafe and everything, that it just becomes your, a second nature to you, that it feels just so comfortable. That's your overall goal. This is a lot of teams. Okay, I got a flat line, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna grab that from them. Let's say they were shooting at me and I'm chasing them. Another thing to wall bounce towards, you see how I'm throwing them off? I could shoot, 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 shoot. And then if I need to reposition, then I'll ADS and go back. And I'm putting away my weapon, right? Let's say that, okay, there's a team over there. What can I do for a movement here? Whenever you're stuck inside, well, you're really only going to be able to ADS, ADS, ADS. So what we're going to do is reposition here. And keep in mind, I'm tap strafing. You see, that's how I'm cutting these angles so sharp. And I'm going to queue up to avoid this gunfire right here because they're right here. So I'm going to take height right here. When you don't have a wall, really the only thing you can do is really tap strafe. So I'm gonna use this, fly over here, and then reposition, I'm gonna go into a bunny hop, right? What I'm trying to do now is lead the two teams together, which is the overall goal. Let's say it was in a building right here and I wanted to wall bounce around the corner to do something a little flashy, and then you could wall bounce like that, right? Or if you wanted to wall bounce here and push up, and I need to tap strafe and get away, there's a tap strafe. Right, now I'm around the corner more, and I got away. But that's pretty much it. I'm gonna bunny hop a little bit. See where I use that to get away and dodge that fire. That's glad that's a good example there. Sometimes, remember, movement doesn't always pan out the way you want it to. Sometimes you will get shot. Sometimes they'll be able to track you very well. And we're gonna bunny hop heal away. Keeping that momentum forward. That's the overall goal. So remember, this isn't necessarily a guide how to do this. Remember, this is a guide of when to use this movement stuff. You're using movement tech to get in and into encounter, to reposition, to throw enemies off. Especially, let's say, let's see if I can get into a, a gunshot and then use movement to to throw an opponent off. So let's say I were to shoot, right? Let's see if I can get an example here. Let's say I was shoot, shoot, shoot. Look at me. Hey, buddy. Hey, come back over here. Okay. Hey, hey, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Right here. Hello? Hello? Oh, wow, nobody wants to look at me. That's crazy. Am I, am I invisible now? Wish I had this when I actually played the game. Hey, buddy, look at me. Look at me. And then you would kind of tap strafe around. You can do that. Let's say I was reloading. Here's a tap strafe, right? Throw, throw your, your, your opponent off. Let's say I was shooting, right? And then I wanted to uh, even do a small wall. Oh, I screwed it up. But that that would be an example. That's that's whenever movement can go wrong, right? Uh, the, big, the biggest tip I can employ there it, for you is, one, while well, I'm shooting at them to get everyone to look at me, is to make sure that you have maximum velocity. That happens a lot whenever you don't pay attention, you don't get maximum velocity. I was anticipating one person was shooting me and unfortunately all three. So the only thing you can do in that scenario is literally turn and just shoot. You're not gonna be able to wall bounce and do crazy, amazing movement. You're just going to get eliminated. So just remember that. Remember how many people are looking at you at one point. So that's a, I'm glad that actually happened because that's a good example. Usually you'll get slowed and you have to make sure, do you see your arms moving at a, a decent velocity? Did you wait the two second rule? Did you wait two seconds as you're running to build maximum velocity? What you could do is do the jump fatigue there, but I, the problem is that I was at a little bit of a slope. So kind of screwed up my movement. It kind of is what it is. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to cover. I want to get into a gunfight in a, in a hallway, and I'm going to see if I can do that, and then showcase a wall bounce afterwards. And I've already showcased uh, in terms of a tap strafe as well, but I think that covers at least the mass majority, at least getting you to think outside the box. I'm going to jump cut again here in a second. Okay, the last example I want to highlight. Remember, again, I can't stress enough, slide jump to everything you do, but le learn the maximum velocity. Can't stress that enough. I know I'm trying to talk to the movement just so you kind of understand it specifically. I want to stand near a building. I'm surprised they're landing on top of each other. That's insane. So I'm going to land over here, close by. And a highlight, if you were in a gunfight, when you can do a wall bounce afterwards as you reload. So I got a gun, but I'm not really going to shoot it just unless I want to get their attention. Let's go inside here. Because you essentially, we're going to, you're going to start off with a strafe. And this is just one I see everyone that they want to see. So they're going to be up top here. I'm going to shoot just to get their attention. Let's say I was shooting, shooting, shoot, shoot, and then I reload, right? And then I wall bounce, there we go, to throw them off. That's where you can put it in. The problem is that most people get thrown off by, and there's a slide jump away, you put away the gun and reposition, that most people get thrown off by, by this movement, 
and this is a little horizon tip right here because I'm side strafing back and forth to see if she's going to come up, is where you... People, you have to remember, are they shooting at you? Did they land the shots? Because if they land the shots, well, what's going to happen is that you're going to be instantly slowed. So let's get an armor swap and let's do this again. So if I were here, take a shot. Oh, God, I got stuck on the wall. And that's just what happens sometimes. I got stuck in the little curvature right here. But I, I, I'm glad I died because then I can wrap up the video here. But you see where, if I were to go back and you were to go watch what happened at, whenever I took some shots and then I wall bounce and reposition because I was reloading, right? Because I needed to reload my gun. I needed to incorporate some movement. If they're shooting at you and you get slowed by the bullet, you have to realize whenever they're not shooting and they're repositioning and whenever you want to just keep mobility and get a different angle and reposition overall. I, I hope this is very helpful for those out there, especially as you're trying to get your movement. The only thing I can tell you is that you have to just go into the test range to the point where you don't think about this, where it just it becomes like they say when you're using a controller or mouse, where it just becomes an extension of your arm or your hands. And you just feel so comfortable with the movement where you don't think about it, where it looks so fluid, where you're like, oh, I'm wall bouncing. I'm bunny hopping. I'm going to do a tap strafe. I'm going to do, you know, if you super glide, if you time that masterfully, I don't get it all the time, unfortunately, because I don't practice it enough. But there you go. It's 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 good movement to learn whenever you're trying to do nice clean tap strafes, whenever you're trying to bunny hop and slide jump, everything. It should just come second nature. And if it doesn't, it will. You just got to put the hours in. And that's where movement, it's just like doing a, a, any other movement where you just get the timing and understand what to do. But again, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I feel like this was a very highly requested video. I don't see it on YouTube. I feel like this video isn't perfect, but actually doing it in real time, we got some really, really great examples and I hope that that's helpful for you guys. Honestly, you know what this reminds me of? I'm going to put this at the very start, actually. Uh, I'm going to put this at the very start, and it's going to loop back to the beginning.